Now that 2019 is out of the way, we can all look back on the highs and lows of the year. The ups and downs, if you will. I mean, we gotta keep on brand after all. It wasn't the greatest year for film by any means, with some stunning failures and the probable deaths, at least for now, of previously well-loved franchises like The Terminator. You, uh, you couldn't see that, but I was just doing air quotes while saying well-loved in that sentence. While there were towering high points as well, it's sort of inevitable to look back on an uneven year at what could have been. And judging by the alternate endings some of the biggest and most notorious films of the year could have had, it's safe to say cinema in 2019 could have been very different. Sometimes better, sometimes worse, but altogether much, much different. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 alternate endings to 2019 movies you almost saw. Number 10, A Scrolls Reveal and Space Battle, Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix was a mess, obviously, and part of the issues came down to the editing choices and the heavy reshoots that transformed the entire third act of the movie. In the version we actually got, Magneto and Beast go after Jean Grey to exact revenge for her murder of Mystique, leading to a big mutant-on-mutant -mutant battle after which everyone is arrested and then put on a train to mutant prison. The aliens then attack looking for Jean, and we get a huge train-based set piece in which waves of ETs nobody really cares about are used as cannon fodder. Jean then kills the Scourge in space and seems to die, but not really, and then everyone cheers that the awful mess is finally, finally over. The original ending though, which was allegedly changed because of too many similarities with Captain Marvel, was revealed in most detail by Ty Sheridan on The Real Blend podcast. He said that there would have been a battle at the UN after Charles and Scott go there to warn of the impending Dabari invasion, where they find out the UN guards are actually Skrulls, which is the term he used, though it could be that he meant Dabari instead because that makes way more sense, and then battle them. Then Jean would head to space where she would have fought off the entire Dabari fleet single-handedly in a scene very much like Captain Marvel's finale. What you're seeing now is the concept art, and it kinda looks pretty sweet. Number 9. Danvers Flies Solo, Captain Marvel After the huge third act revelation that the Skrulls were in fact the good guys and the Kree were the villains, Carol Danvers removes her inhibitor chip and goes full Super Saiyan, punches a hole in the Kree fleet, sending Ronan the Accuser scampering off in retreat, before heading off with the Skrulls to find their other survivors and a new home planet. Considering just how fitting it was for Danvers to take on the role as Skrull Protector though, it's odd to find out that the original ending had Captain Marvel simply go off on her own into space after defeating her Kree enemies. We would have basically have got a poochie moment here, with the small band of Skrull left to just kind of fend for themselves, probably dying on their way back to their home planet or something. Number 8. Bo chooses her new owner, Toy Story 4. At the end of the, despite what you may have heard, very much necessary and not at all pointless Toy Story 4, we saw the fitting end to Woody's story as he realised that he was always destined to be abandoned by a procession of owners. He chose instead to devote his life to finding homes for other toys, living in freedom with Bo Peep and roaming the world instead. Thanks to the home release extras though, a storyboard revealed that a more bittersweet ending was considered where Bo Peep turned her back on the life of freedom she'd sold Woody on when she realised she actually did want an owner. Despite everything she'd gone through and the entire moral lesson of the story, Bo felt a connection again and decided she was destined to be Harmony's toy, leaving Woody alone. Again, my god is that a bummer. Number 7. The Secret Villain Revealed, Hobbs and Shaw the end of the delightfully bonkers Hobbs and Shaw sees the central trio head to Samoa so that Hobbs' brother can fix the device to remove the nasty bioweapon virus in Hattie's bloodstream, and yes, it is as mad as it sounds. Naturally, Idris Elba's black Superman Brixton and his team arrive, there are fireworks and then they defeat him, leading to his shady boss remote terminating him. Everyone celebrates and then a post-credit reveal, because of course there's a post-credit reveal, shows a worse virus is out there and it's time to go again. In the final version, Brixton's shady boss is no more than a disembodied voice, played in secret by Ryan Reynolds with the fake stage name Champ Nightingale. But in one version, the director did say that we would have met this shady character. Keanu Reeves had been in negotiations for the role, which perhaps explains why the original plan was to have the big boss revealed for a sequel sting. 
It was felt that a new character was unnecessary in the end though, so they just went with the voice to tease a future mystery instead. Number 6. Caitlin Steps Up, Brightburn in David Yaravesky's Superman Parallel Nightmare, the bizarro lead character proves to be a dangerous menace rather than a potential savior of humanity. So everyone, his adoptive family included, attempt to kill him. It does not go well. In a seriously downer ending, every attempt to bring him down fails as he starts a campaign of global terror after causing a plane crash that destroys his hometown and kills all the residents. Get it? Because Superman saved crashing planes, he didn't destroy them. Hashtag satire. In a slightly more hopeful ending, there was a plan to have a potential hero rising to take on Brandon in the form of Caitlyn, his crush whose hand he mutilated when she rejected him earlier in the film. One final shot would have seen her in a lab fastening a robot arm on her broken one, seriously pissed off and implying a battle that could have been picked up in sequels. Number 5. The Family That Fights Crime Together – Shazam At the end of Shazam, we saw the titular hero defeating the villain by transforming his adoptive siblings into adult superheroes and then having lunch with Superman at school with Freddie Freeman before a mid credit scene revealed the incarcerated Savannah being visited by Mr. Mind aka a talking caterpillar and yes, this is somehow even more mad than Hobbs and Shaw. According to director David F. Sandberg though, they did shoot an alternate ending in case the Mr. Mind cameo didn't work for whatever reason. It would have shown the newly empowered foster kids all transforming into superheroes to fly off to stop a hostage situation. We probably wouldn't have seen that go down on screen, but seeing them as a super team who retained their powers wouldn't have been a bad thing. Number 4. Peter Gives Up His Secret Identity – Spider-Man Far From Home in one of the very best ever comic book movie endings, we saw Spider-Man realize Mysterio's true nature and then defeat him in a London-based set piece as the baddie attempts to kill Peter's friends to cover his tracks. However, he dies of his injuries, Peter returns home to New York a triumphant hero, and then his world is turned upside down when J. Jonah Jameson appears and broadcasts doctored footage from Mysterio's final moments, revealing Peter Parker to be Spider-Man and implicating him as a murderer. As brilliant as that ending was, it wasn't always that way. Out of concern that having Mysterio reveal Peter's identity diminished the victory too much, the writers played with the idea of actually having Peter sacrifice his own secret identity out of necessity in his fight with Mysterio. That would have fit with him doing it in the Civil War comic, but it's way less impactful than what we actually got, at least in my opinion. 3. Lewis's Grim Choice – Pet Cemetery. At the end of this Stephen King adaptation, we saw the tragic Ellie reanimated after death but reborn as a murderous animal who fatally stabs her mother, much to her father Lewis's dismay. Intent on having her mother join her in evil, Ellie knocks her father out and drags her mom to the pet cemetery, where she ends up fighting Lewis who has caught up. Just as he's about to kill her though, Lewis is himself killed by the now reanimated corpse of his wife. He's then buried too and comes back alive, and the trio head to find their son to kill him and then revive him as well. A happy ending, this is not. In the alternate ending that was released as part of the Blu-ray though, Lewis spares Ellie instead of killing her and decides he cannot live without his wife, burying her while she's still alive, may I add, so they can be together forever. He chooses the evil for them all willfully. We then see Lewis retrieving Gage and taking him for a grim reunion with his dead mother. And you know what? I don't know. I really don't know if this would have been better or worse. So please let me know down in the comments what you guys think because I'm absolutely stumped. Number 2. Arthur Kills Bruce Wayne – Joker the ending of the stellar Joker origin movie sees Arthur Fleck realize his dream of being a star of Murray Franklin's show by appearing as a guest and then murdering the host live on air. He's then arrested, but on his way to prison or Arkham, the Gotham riots lead to his squad car crashing and then Arthur joining in with the chaos, apparently heralded as the protesters' new leader. Before he's locked up again, we see the Wayne family executed in a back alley by one of the clown rioters, which Arthur remembers fondly while in Arkham. However, an alternate ending was way more dark and would have killed the idea of there being a Bruce Wayne or a Batman in Arthur's universe at all. And that's because, well, Arthur would have killed the Waynes and little Bruce as well. 
According to Kevin Smith, the original ending had Arthur in the hospital, and when he's asked what he's laughing at, he says, I was just thinking of something funny, before a flashback revealed him killing Thomas and Martha Wayne as Bruce screamed. Chillingly, he would then turn to walk away, but then turn back on his prey, shrugging and shooting Bruce as the credits crashed onto the screen. Number 1. Tony's Afterlife – Avengers Endgame As if you need reminding, Avengers Endgame ends with Tony Stark finally proving that he was the one to lie on the wire, sacrificing himself to snap his fingers and kill Thanos. He dies and we get to see a memorial service held in his honour after we see a heartbreaking message he recorded before his death in the event that he didn't make it back. Cue floods of tears for about, oh, I don't know, a whole month afterwards. In the highly publicised alternate ending that was scrapped and eventually ended up released on Disney Plus though, we saw Tony transported into the afterlife immediately after snapping his fingers. There he meets his daughter Morgan, all grown up now, who tells him she turns out okay and his sacrifice was worth it because he was the right man to do it. It's not bad, but you can't tell why it was omitted for the far more visceral theatrical ending. So that's our list, I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below, would you prefer to see any of these alternate endings on screen, or are you pleased with what we actually got? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.